Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing. Today, I'm excited because this is the day I have been waiting for. Of course, Ivy, my girl that's sitting over here that's been in the water for the last week, shed! And you know what that means. I'm just gonna pull this shed out really quick and take a close look at it. Again, looks like another perfectly beautiful long shed, but more importantly, not the fact that she shed is exciting. I mean, that's exciting in itself, but the fact is, I said once she was done shedding, I was gonna get in the water with her and just kinda chill out and see what she's gonna do, how she's gonna interact with me. Not not again, like kind of making her do anything, but seeing what she wants to do. But unfortunately, she's up on the land right now. So what I think I'm gonna do is just literally just kind of put her into the water, let her settle in for a few minutes here and kind of settle down. That way when I get in, she's like kind of chilled out and just see what she is. She's such a curious animal that I have a feeling she's just gonna be swimming all over me. I'm not sure yet what's gonna happen, but for now, I've gotta just get her from back there, which is not gonna be an easy task, and just get her back in the water. Uh, we'll probably feed her tomorrow. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking and tomorrow I might feed her the largest pig I've ever fed her. I'm not sure, I have a giant 20 pound pig. I may try to feed her tomorrow, so uh, fingers crossed that goes well. But in the meantime, let's go in there and get her, get her in the water, and uh, let's go for a little swim. I'm just trying to tickle her a little bit to see if I can't get her moving away, because she's wedged in this tree right here right now, and it's gonna be impossible. She's such a strong animal. There's no way I'm gonna get her out of here without her moving on her own. Like I said, I'll let her settle in the water for you know a good half hour or so, something like that, so she's really chill. So that when I go in there, she uh, is like curious, right? And here she comes. There you go, girl. There's my Ivy. And to be totally honest with you, I'm just, like I said, tickling her back here right now. She might go in the water by herself. I mean, it looks like she's just kind of heading in that direction by herself. So this is even better because I really don't want to kind of, you know, force her into the water. I want it to be her decision. I think that way we're going to get a more genuine experience, right? So I'm just going to let her crawl into the water by herself. Here you go, Ivy. Go ahead, girl. There you go, girl. There you go. Oh, she's so amazing. And she's just sitting there kind of with her head in the waterfall. She's such a goofy animal. I love this thing so much. I'm excited. Like I said, I've been thinking about this for the last couple weeks. How cool it's gonna be to just get in there, chill out, experience what she's gonna do. I mean, you know, you guys have seen me when I'm in there cleaning the enclosure and she's just kind of like all over me, like, what's going on, Dad? So uh, this should be pretty cool with me completely in the water with her, just chilling with her. So uh, I'm gonna let her just finish getting in the water, let her settle in. I'm gonna go ahead and change into some swim shorts and uh, we'll jump in and have some fun. Got my swim stuff on and I am going in. Now again, I might be in here for a half hour, an hour, I'm not sure. Because the idea is, is that I don't want to necessarily make her interact with me. I just want to sit down in the water here and just wait for her to come to me, see what she does, you know? I and mean, she's such a curious animal. So let's just go ahead and get in. And again, I'm gonna to try to not even touch her. Just gonna kind of jump in here like this. And I'm just gonna literally sit down in the water and wait for her to come to me. Again, Ivy's just a very curious animal. Right now, she's just over on the other side. I'm not gonna touch her, I'm not gonna do anything. I want her to recognize me and then come over to me. Right now, she's just chilling out over on that side, which is fine. Again, I'm gonna be really patient with this. Uh, even if it takes me a half an hour for her to finally come over and see me, that's fine. And then once she sees me, I just wanna see what she's gonna do. You know, how is she gonna interact with me being in the water with her? Uh, I think it's gonna be pretty interesting and I have no idea how this is gonna turn out but I'm excited about it. See, she's turned around. She's kind of noticed me now. She's very visual, so she knows I'm here, and she's kind of going like, what's going on, Dad? What are you doing in my water? She's definitely very curious. You can definitely see that she is uh, turned all the way to me. Her tongue is coming out in that kind of intelligence mode where she's thinking like, what is he doing in here? She's never seen me before when I'm just totally submerged in here where I'm not working, right? So she's probably really thinking like, what is going on? I don't know. So uh, again, she's definitely, she's inching her way over to me and I know she's gonna get over to me pretty soon. So uh, I'm pretty excited about this. And definitely like thinking, what is going on with this? Why is my dad in here? Now she's just kind of climbing all over me. <laughs> this is such a cool experience. Oh my gosh, to be inside the water with a big green anaconda. So she kind of climbed up to me, uh, climbed kind of over me, and is now on the other side. Uh, 
I think she is a little bit confused because again, she's used to me coming in here when I'm uh, cleaning and stuff like that. And she's really curious now to be just sitting in here. It's almost like she's like, what is going on, dad? So uh, now she's over on the other side under the waterfall. So I might just go ahead and start playing with her now after kind of seeing and witnessing uh, her natural behavior of the kind of curiosity and being over. Now I think I'll just interact with her a little bit and swim around because why not, right? What an experience with Ivy. I tell you what, what a good girl. This has been awesome. Uh, just what I expected. She was definitely a little bit, as you can see, she's running away now, going on land. She's like, I'm out of here, Dad. She had enough. She was curious in the beginning. We had some fun swimming around, and now she's like, all right, you can leave my territory. But this was the first time that we've done this. I'm gonna continue doing this over the next you know, couple months to get her more habituated to people being in the water because eventually I'd love to people to be able to get in because what an absolutely amazing experience. I mean, this was uh, way cooler than I even expected. I love it in here. So uh, I'll just let my girls chill out for a while, get ready for a big meal tomorrow, and uh, uh, I'll dry off and get back to work. Guess what time it is? And we got just one clutch of colubrids today, but it's actually a pretty cool clutch. It's actually a hypo corn snake that is actually het for terrazzo. Terrazzo is actually a pattern mutation in corn snakes and it's recessive and it's bred to another hypo terrazzo. So we should have all hypo corns that come out of these eggs here. And of course, some will be terrazzos. Now we haven't produced any terrazzos in quite some time. So it's pretty cool to finally get some eggs on the ground here. And I'm just kind of weeding through here. Looks like a little slugger right here. This egg looks like it's actually good. Probably candle that for sure. We've got a little slug right here. Looks like a couple to be honest with you. So it's not a tremendously great clutch, but there's a bunch of good eggs in here, which it look really good. And it's going to be cool. Again, hypotrazos are really cool. We produce ghosts in the past. So it's cool to be working with them again. We've got two, four, six, seven good eggs and three little sluggers, but not too bad. Mama's just going to go back in here. We'll clean her up, get her shed out of here, put a bunch of water back in with her and get her back out the food within the next couple weeks and uh, again guys we've only produced a couple second clutches so far so a lot of the females that have already laid will lay again we're not gonna breed all of them but a good majority of these females will have a second clutch so uh, we're, we're really theoretically about halfway through the breeding season when it comes to colubrids just notice that Tiana seems to be a little bit defensive of her nest area which is right under this ledge right here and she doesn't look quite as fat as she did before so I'm wondering if she laid another clutch of slugs so I'm just gonna kind of poke around Tiana I'm sorry Sorry, baby. I know, girl. You're a good girl. Let's just move you over here. It's hard to say. She's still pretty fat. She may not have laid yet, but she's definitely starting to nest over here. So I'm just going to take a quick look and see if there's anything under here yet. Doesn't look like anything yet, but Tiana is definitely gearing up. And again, like I mentioned, this fall, we can put a male in with her for next year and hopefully get some fertile egg. That would be so cool. But Tiana, you're a good girl. She's gotten so good. I mean, just look at how different she is from the time that we got her when she was so afraid of things. Again, not quite Diddy and Dixie or Bella yet, but still huge progress. Gotta give you guys my wonderful update with our tarantulas. And uh, as you guys know, uh, that red meat molted the first time here in the reptarium. Now it's time to feed him. I've got some super worms. Mmm, nice fatty. It's a good amount of caloric value for these guys, especially right after they molt. They lose a lot of calories when they molt, guys. So it's always really, really good to, once you get them feeding, get them feeding pretty heavy on some good, good high calorie food. Let's get at it. I'm telling you guys, I know he's gonna be crushing food because it's really fun to watch him eat. He's always, he's always a feisty little guy. So let's do this. Holy moly, 
of that was cool. Man, that dude's lightning, lightning fast. Or just a little, little spider, man. He could really take down a large, a large, large prey. Really, really thinking about trying to get into getting more bucks like arthropods, any sort of millipedes, centipedes, uh, embly pigeons, any sort of thing like that. Like those are those are definitely the stuff that we want here because uh, it, it, to be honest with you, that's the stuff people want to see. I'm even th considering potentially getting some six-eyed sand spiders, some camel spiders, things like that. Just some variations of these sort of animals that if, even if it's not something we necessarily pull out, it would be at least interesting to show people and, and let people see. Let us know what you guys think. I think it'd be a great idea. We'll put them down in the comments down below and I will see you guys, keep you guys updated soon. Down in the dungeon, and you know what time that means it is. And right now we actually have this girl. Oops, she has one little egg out. She kind of messed her whole cage up. But this is actually a pastel yellow belly. Now she was actually bred to two males. One was actually a pin red stripe, where we could produce lemon blast red stripe yellow bellies. The other one was actually a cine cypress. So we could produce pewter cypress yellow bellies, which either way would be really good. Don't know who the father is, but we're gonna go ahead and get mom off. She's definitely not happy right now, which is kind of slowly get her away from here real quick, and we'll get these eggs out of here. Let's see, oh, let's go ahead and see if we can get this egg. We'll put this egg over here. Whoop, mama, whoop. That's all right, mama, you're a right, girl. Whoa, there, there she goes. She's just protecting her eggs. That's okay, mama. There you go, and you go, and one last egg. Whoop. Just planning those strikes, you know what I mean? So you figure when she strikes and then she rebounds, I got a second to grab the eggs, you know what I mean? That just comes from years of experience of dodging snake bites off. But we've got two, four, six, eight good eggs. That's pretty good. Like I said, whether the male is the pin red stripe or the skinny cypress, doesn't really matter to be honest with you because either one is gonna be really equally as cool. So we'll find out in 57 days what actually was fathering this clutch and what kind of beautiful babies we'll have. I have to kind of share this story with you because you know, even after after all the years I've been doing this, sometimes I get completely blown away and shocked by things. Uh, this is actually a Woma Lesser Pinstripe. She shed out just about four days ago. Now, typically, a ball python is going to lay anywhere around 30 days after shed. So, you know, sometimes it's 24 days, sometimes it's 40 days, but it's going to be around 30 days. Well, she's only shed a few days ago, and I noticed she was laying a little bit weird. And uh, I just looked underneath, and there's actually one slug, and then actually one good egg. That's it, just two eggs from this huge girl here. I can feel her, she doesn't have anything in her, and she laid a few days after shed. I have never had that happen in all the years I've been breeding ball pythons. I mean, the earliest clutch has been 21, 22 days after shed. This girl did it a few days after shed. Completely wild, but it just kind of goes to show you that even when you think you have it all dialed in, there's still things that are gonna throw you curveballs, you know? So as it works out, this uh, big, you know, 1700 gram female literally has one slug, one egg, uh, and it's bred to a pastel crystal, by the way. So, hey, hopefully this Lone Ranger egg here will be something really awesome. We'll just have to wait to see, but I had to share with you guys because uh, my mind is blown. What an amazing experience swimming with Ivy. And remember, tomorrow we're gonna feed her a 20 pound pig. So you gotta tune into that. That's gonna be absolutely incredible. If you did enjoy this video, here's an entire playlist right over here of me playing with big snakes and big reptiles. Could you please support my podcast channel called Checking In right here. You can subscribe on this side you can subscribe to this vlog channel and turn those post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.